we had to find the correct balance in the mixing uh, phase to give the proper space to each element. Combat feedbacks uh, were at the top of our priority list, but we still wanted to enhance the player's journey across Enotria. Hello Maskless One! In this video we will get a behind the scenes of how we made in-game audio, from the original soundtracks to the entire sound design of this journey. So wear your headphones, relax and enjoy. Hi, my name is Aram and I'm the audio director and music composer for Enotra The Last Song. From the start this project has been an inspiring challenge that allowed us to dig into the roots of our past and rediscover our raw and uh, ancestral Italy. One of the things uh, that uh, we discussed was uh, how to properly represent the Mediterranean soundscape and atmosphere, which is usually associated to positive and uplifting feelings, but twisting it in a way that would match the unsettling and tense tone of our story. Italy is a warm country that historically evolved to be a noisy and alive environment, and approaching Enotria, we had to answer the question of what happens when a noisy environment full of life gets trapped into a dimension that is slowly deteriorating, acquiring a sort of decadent beauty. This research, of course, was done in parallel with the work on gameplay feedbacks. Uh, after all, this is a combat-based game. We put a lot of effort to give the right focus to the combat without sacrificing the time to shape a detailed soundscape for this decaying world. The music of Enotria wants to be a journey across several Italian musical traditions. It spans from popular music to Gregorian chants and late Renaissance influences, reflecting the visual changes in environments and the identity of the enemies faced by the players progressing the story. Rediscovering Italy's roots meant digging into its rich musical history, and we found an endless world of styles, instruments and traditions of frenetic and upbeat dances that are often linked to thaumaturgical and mystical religious elements, or that can even mimic sword and knife fights with their movements. We collaborated with amazing musicians that are experts of these traditions and spent their lives studying them and keeping them alive. They inject the life and soul into the soundtrack and their playing immediately projects the listener into an ancestral dimension. Italy's traditional theatre plays an important role in this game, so we decided to focus on giving it a more theatrical vibe in the voice direction. We wanted the game to sound Italian even when characters were speaking, but this opened up the tricky challenge of finding an Italian accent that will not fall into stereotypes. The collaboration with OMUK proved very important for this scope, as we worked with voice actors that would modulate their degree of the accent in their words, making it subtle enough to be perceived without sounding too over the top. We found that working with a lean team in a fast-paced production meant that it was vital to have the right tools to speed up our work. Working with a middleware like WISE and the support of an audio programmer since the beginning of the project helped a lot in building very solid systems that even during the most intense production times allowed the work to be carried smoothly. Hi, I am Camilla Coccia and I'm working on Enotria de la Song as a sound designer. Our starting point to found the sound of the game was developing a sonic identity for Ardore, a powerful force which is a core element of the story. Since it is a force made of vibration and resonance, we decided to record and process several Italian musical instruments and voices and blend the resulting layers with our sounds. This created a very distinct identity that helped us in developing the other audio elements of the games, from ambiences to combat sounds. Ambiences were a very important topic that we researched to characterize the game. Usually people's idea of uh, Italy is tied to relaxing and uplifting uh, atmosphere, but Enotria's world needed to convey tension during the gameplay and stress the unsettling nature of the environment. This meant that we had to find a balance between uh, the Mediterranean nature of the soundscape and the narrative needs. We found a good compromise by working on the two main layers, a natural one reflecting sounds of the Italian landscape and an abstract one used to drive tension in the moments and places where we needed it. Since the main focus of our game is combat, we had to give support particularly to the design team. 
and worked through several iterations before finding the right audio feedbacks that could help in driving our style of combat. This also meant that we had to find the correct balance in the mixing uh, phase to give the proper space to each element. Combat feedbacks uh, were at the top of our priority list, but we still wanted to enhance the player's journey across Enotria. We designed a detailed soundscape to immerse the player during exploration and we chose instead to keep the mix cleaner during the most busy moments to focus the attention on combat. One of the most challenging aspects was thinking of audio for a game with very few scripted moments. The endless possibility of gameplay made it hard for us to predict how many sounds could play in a determinate moment. This opened up questions on how to approach the mixing phase. We opted for a modular approach, carefully designing each sound category so that it would inhabit a specific range of frequencies. Hi, I am Daniel Oliviero and I'm the audio programmer for Enotria The Last Song. Working with a lean team in a phase-based production means developing many pipelines and systems through the audio programming, all that in order to have a sustainable workflow. The tools for the sound designers have been implemented to make them work at the higher possible level. Thanks to a tag-based system approach, we have a safer and flexible workflow, and we use it as the main base for all the other audio systems. To handle data, we adopt a centralized approach with the specific data assets, which means avoiding conflicts with other departments, as well as allowing the audio team to work independently. These development choices permit the sound designers complete freedom in creating sounds and working in WISE, without any need to write code or implement problems in Unreal 5. To speed up the sound designer workflow in creating the soundscape of another world, we developed a tool that allows us to simply draw custom shapes for ambience audio volumes. It is fully integrated with a native WISE Unreal 5 SDK features such as portals and reverse, and this way implementing a new ambience area in the environment becomes just a matter of few clicks. The native WISE Unreal 5 SDK proved quite helpful as a starting point to develop our custom extensions. Thanks to that, we've been able to quickly develop features such as the Visual Audio Debugger and the Optimize Emitter Management System. Adopting WISE as the audio middleware for this project was in line with our philosophy of keeping the sound designer workflow as independent as possible from the other departments.